Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. It is Monday all week long with my, knuckle it up, my very best mm. new best friend, mm-hmm. Nessa Joy Revaness Goss, Lock Nessa Goss from Instagram. How many followers do you have? Mm, not a lot. I love that. I love the fact <laughs> you don't even care, really, no. right? That's so, It's just for me. Yeah, it touches my heart. Like, you don't even care. Hey, I will ask this question, though. Do you look at how many people like your post? Does that matter to you? It doesn't matter. It used to. But. I've been mowing you five bucks every time you answer well. That's $10 already. Sweet. That is awesome. So do you, are you a more of a story person? Do you go to Definitely people's story. stories? Okay, yeah. so you don't go by their feed. I do sometimes, but that's just too much work. It just is. let it let it play. So you think Instagram's going to be around a while, or you think it's going by the wayside? I think it's just going to keep getting updated to something different. Yeah. You know? Final question. Loch Ness Goss, baby Goss yet? No. <laughs> oh, we talked about it. Everyone's last week. gonna think it is because you keep I'm talking so about it. Well, I'm trying, Mom. I'm shout out to Mom. I'm getting her to come down here. She is for Christmas. Knuckle it up. There's fifteen dollars yes. already. That's also <laughs> Mom's coming to visit you. Yep. You're sitting in a whole other week. So mm-hmm. obviously you endured last week. Thank mm-hmm. you. It's so fun having you here. What's your hat? I notice it's uh, different this time. What What yep. is the whole? Roman it's one one six. Oh, no, it's something else. This is, sorry, 116 is Amelia's thing. Okay. This is Dustin Coe's It looks revelation like 310, line. maybe 6, 310, yeah. 6. It's his, like, revelation 316. Line. Yeah. That's what it is. There you go. I don't okay. know Ro- Roman numerals. <laughs> okay, it was cool. I like the hat. So we'll figure that out. We'll rep that. So yep. you're repping somebody's stuff today. Justin Co. So and they're fi- having a baby too. That's not awesome. A little baby boy. Mm-hmm. They did a whole reveal and did a guitar reveal. I thought that was pretty it cool. Was. And she let him do that. That yes. was even better. Um, last week you were on. We ta- It was fun. You picked a topic on marriage. This week the topic is all things Christmas. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Yep. You think it's going to be fun? Yep. Are you enjoying coming, or are you just doing it because you have to? I think it's fun. I think it's fun. Reach back behind you and get my gift. You gave me a gift last week, and I was so thankful because you know I love Black Rifle Coffee. So she gave me Black Rifle Coffee, (laughs) C-A-F. I was so excited. It says this, and this is what made my heart feel good. C.A.F. delivers a high caffeine punch with a rich, smoky flavor made. And I thought she's really thought about me because you were in Savannah Mm -hmm. and you and Matt were like, got to get him some coffee. Yep. Matt's your hubs. Yep. And y'all bought me this coffee. So then when we finish the Bible reading project, I go to take it home to drink it. And this is the side of it. Can I just read? And then I really got my feelings hurt. (laughs) I didn't know it had that warning. I know, but I, I like, she's she's tricking me. She's right, because this is what it says on the side. Disclaimer, mm-hmm. which I would have thought if you really loved me, you would have read that, right? Wouldn't typically mm-hmm. somebody yeah, that I loves didn't. you would read a disclaimer? I, I just trusted a stranger. Yeah, man. <laughs> and it says this, disclaimer, according to the National Institute of Drug Abuse. <laughs> Right? I'm like, what? Gosh, Ness. And then it says, besides death. Mm-hmm. A severe caffeine overdose can cause a fast and erratic heartbeat, seizures, vomiting, diarrhea, and disorientation, but however may cause awesomeness. Yeah. Awesomeness. And that's what I thought. That's what matters. Yeah, because I thought she's giving me something that could kill me, give me seizures, diarrhea, diarrhea, vomiting, Mm -hmm. or awesome. So which is it? Awesome. So you bought it because the last phrase says may cause awesomeness. Yeah, that's just... That's great that it says that. Can I give you some Papa, Daddy, Granddaddy wisdom? Sure. You got to read disclaimers, Nessa. <laughs> I didn't, what coffee has a disclaimer? Black Rifle, because it is the best coffee out there. <laughs> there you go. So, so if you want diarrhea, seizures, <laughs> or erratic heartbeats, or potential to be awesome, yes. CAF caffeine. Thank you. I'm going to try it. Good. But I got nervous. I wanted, before I tried it, I wanted just to hear your heart mm-hmm. of why you and Matt saw And I, I was totally off. Because you know what I'm thinking? What? I'm thinking y'all read that and thought this would be funny. Mm -mm. Can you imagine him getting diarrhea because he drinks coffee every Sunday morning and having to leave? (laughs) That's what I thought. But you didn't think that. Nope. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're here all week long with me to talk about all things awesome. I found a nice Christmas pic of you. Where is this pic from? That's in my mom's house in Illinois. In Illinois. She's coming to see. So that's going to be up there all week. We're repping the Loch Ness of Goss (laughs) talking about all things Christmas. I'm glad you're here. Luke chapter Mm -hmm. one. Are you ready? Yep. So uh, actually chapter two, and then we're just going to talk about Christmas stuff all week long. Sounds good. But I'm just going to read down to verse 13. So Luke chapter two, 
verse 1 through verse 13. And uh, this week, what if it makes you cry? Well, Are you a crier? Yeah. If I'm not between like a 5 and a 7, uh-huh. that's the middle ground. If I'm too sad or too happy or too mad, I'll just cry. So you're a, if you're real happy, you cry? Yeah. Okay. So so we wouldn't know really if she's either really happy or really sad. Yeah. Okay, cool. I like that. I like that you're a happy crier, too. (laughs) In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be as who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those who whom his favor rests. Mm-hmm. You want to know what I want to talk about this week, All Things Christmas? What? How to go from pain to peace. Mm. And I think that's hard for people. It is. Because the angel says, uh, verse 12-ish, uh, 10 through 12, he says this. He says, I bring you good news of, of great joy. Uh, to you, a Savior's born. And then the thing he heralds from the sky is peace on earth. And so I was praying about this week, uh, what we should talk about. And I felt like that phrase, from pain to peace. Why, if the angels, two things, if the angel's comment is there's coming peace and joy, to me it must mean it wasn't there. Yeah. Even though people are probably trying to find it. Mm-hmm. And then after Jesus is born, I still think that's the battle. I, I think, in my opinion, there's nothing greater in any human than to be at inner peace. Mm-hmm. You know, and we try to find that in all kind of ways: yeah. yoga, meditation, uh, hobbies, working out, mm-hmm. uh, addictions. You know, uh, I, I just want peace. Some people drink that away. You mm-hmm. know, um, and um, other people try to just stay busy. If I can, if I can stay busy enough, I know I bumped into that a lot. Of mm-hmm. well, if I can just keep myself busy, I don't have to think about the hurt. Yeah. But, you know, the sad thing, you lay down at night, you just can't stay busy 24-7. And so I just want to spend all week talking about how does Jesus really bring people peace when they've had such pain, abuse, uh, you know, maybe verbal sexual abuse, uh, divorce, uh, you know, the story of your father, Mm -hmm. you know, a a mom and dad that split and a dad you really hadn't talked to a lot. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and then somebody jumps up as a Christian and goes, hey, peace on earth. Yeah. And it sounds romantic at Christmas, peace on earth, but how many people don't have peace? So yeah. I want to talk about that. So here's, here's this. I'm going to throw a question from the hip. Mm-hmm. And uh, tell me a time that you, like, without really having to dig deep in the well, that you can go, yeah, th- there was pain at this moment of my life. When was that or what was it that you know this was painful to me? It was probably like you mentioned with my dad. Okay, what happened? Um, he has never been officially diagnosed, but we think he definitely has bipolar and schizophrenia, and it just got too much for my mom to handle. You were how old? I was 16 when they, my mom decided to leave him. Okay. So the issue was since Nick and I were teenagers, he couldn't like tell us what to do anymore. You know, we're sure. growing into our own minds, and so my mom couldn't control us or him or pr- like keep protecting us so we wouldn't see anything we started seeing all these weird things and so it just really like devastated Nick and I in terms of well he's been a pastor his whole life and now this is happening and he we like started seeing him physically abuse my mom mm-hmm. and then Nick started coming out with all these things and so we were just like how can someone who loves God do that and that's so, a good question and your answer was what 
Wow, that was my question. Okay. Did you ever find an answer? Because that's a great <sighs> question. Saying. How can so you say he was in ministry, right? Mm-hmm. And then you see him doing these things that to you are creating pain for your mom, mm-hmm. ultimately pain for you when they divorce. Yep. Um, I mean, how did it make you feel? I think that's a valid question. Where's God? Why God? How did you work through that at 16, 17 years old? Yeah. Well, I just decided not to be with God right then. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So give me your give me that choice. You're ticked. You're mad. You're hurt. Dad's gone. Mm-hmm. He was in ministry. Did mom stay in ministry? You said yep. the other day, last week, she was in church. Yep. So she, she stayed. stayed in. Yep. Okay. You're on the fence now, but you yep. choose, eh, not me. So what was that decision like? It was really living a double life because I didn't want to disappoint my mom mm-hmm. or disappoint my leaders. And so I was really, I became like a pathological liar. All right. Like I would say, like I went to my friend's house every weekend, but then we would, her mom didn't care what she did. She wasn't a believer. And then we would like go to <laughs> clubs mm-hmm. and like all that kind of stuff. And I was 16 years old. Sure. She was two years older than me. So she could sneak me into stuff. Mm-hmm. And so that happened like every weekend and I wasn't necessarily doing drugs or drinking. I was just being deceitful Mm -hmm. and because I didn't want to, that wasn't drugs and alcohol wasn't a draw for me. It was really feeling like I was making my own decisions and doing what I wanted to do. Okay. So freedom, nobody controls me. Dad doesn't control me. Mom doesn't control me. Freedom. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that this week? Sure. Let's do it. Cause I bet there's a bunch of people that are in pain. Mm Mm-hmm from all kind of relationship problems, yep. life problems, who need hope. Mm-hmm. Will you do me a favor? Yes. Pray for them right now. Pray all for right. people and let's bless them. Let's do it. Dear Lord, we lift up everyone listening today and people who don't listen. We pray that you just speak to them and give them peace. And I pray for everyone that feels like they are trapped or just in this darkness during this time. Lord, we just lift them up to you. Bring peace to their heart. Bring healing to their, bring healing to their heart and restoration this week and We just pray for a real revelation of you and your love through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, and we will see you tomorrow. Mm Mm-hmm.